Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today, to complete the install on this pair of 2022 Yamaha VX Cruiser HOs, we are going to complete the installation by installing all the bolt-on rod holder attachments, which is the dash rod holders, the footwell rod holders, and the rod holders down the back on the rear seat. So as you can see, the bench behind us, them lined up, ready to go. We'll show you how to install. So for the rear seat rod holders, first of all you want to unclip the rear seat, put that aside, also remove the removable storage, also put that aside. Once you've removed the seat, you will see there's these four M8 bolts with a 12mm head, you want to remove them, and then we will access these 6mm Allen head bolts. It's not necessary to remove these all the way, but I'll remove, I will remove them all the way just because we need to lift this up a bit to make the installation easier. So these are just a M8 bolt with a, with a brass nut on the back side, which you just have to reach in here with a spanner to hold while you undo these bolts. But once you've undone all the nuts, make sure the nuts don't drop into the hull. Remove all the bolts, put them aside. And then you can pull up on this grab handle and just sit that aside and now you want to undo these two M8 bolts with a 6mm allen key head. Once you've removed these two bolts you can put them aside. You don't have to worry about the nuts falling off the back of these because they are captive nuts into the hull. So they will stay there when you remove the bolt. Next you want to Pick up your rear seat rod holder kit, sit that into position with the bolt spur, get that one started, line this hole up, get that one started, and then you want to go through and tighten these down. You want to go reasonably tight on these. So once you've done them back up tight, you want to sit the grab handle back in position. And you'll notice it has these little locating bits that fit in those holes. You want to line them up and then you can drop your four bolts back into the holes. We go one, two, three, and four. And then we can put our nuts back on the inside. So once we've got all our bolts on there with the nuts started on the inside, we want to reach inside with a spanner, hold the nuts, and tighten up the bolts from the outside. Now I like to start with the two front ones, tighten them all the way down and then the two back ones. You don't need to go extremely tight on the two back ones. You'll find that since having this installed, if you go too tight on these, it upsets the angle of this locking mechanism and it'll be a little bit harder to unlatch your seat. So if your seat is a bit harder to unlatch, just back these bolts off a tiny bit and that will free it up and it'll be back to how it should be. So I'll go ahead and tighten those now. We've got all of these bolts tightened up again. Our seat rail is nice and sturdy now. Our rear seat rod holder kit is in there, nice and secure. We've still got access to the toe point if we need it. And now we can sit the storage bucket back in there and put the seat back on. So there we go. Rear seat rod holder kit is installed, ready for fishing. It's as easy as that. Next we'll move on to the footwell rod holders. So next up we are going to install our right hand side footwell rod holders. So we need to start off by removing this panel here and what we need to do is open the glove box, clip that up and you can see we've got two bolt holes there and there. 
uh, just these M6 bolts with a 4mm Allen head. So there's one there, one there, and one down here. So we want to go ahead and remove all of those. And once we have removed them, we should be able to pull the panel out a bit. Now this panel is actually on lugs, three lugs along there that locate them in the next panel up. So what we want to do is it has to slide back towards the rider first. As you can see in there, those lugs are sliding back first and then out of the hole. So we have removed that side panel. And that will give you access to this area here. And now that bolt there is the first bolt hole we use for the rod holder. For the back end, for that last hole there, that will line up down there. And then we do actually need to drill the front hole. And I'll show you how to do that now. So what you want to do to find the position of the front hole, is you want to get one of your M6 bolts, put that in the back hole. And then tighten it down enough to hold the rod holder. Now the rod holder is sitting in position by itself and you'll see the rod holder has this one fold line there and one fold line there and that matches these curves of the hull of the jet ski. So you just want to line those two curves up with the hull of the jet ski and then that will give you your position and you can mark that bolt hole with a marker pen and go back and drill a 7mm hole through the hull. So you can see that hole is already drilled through there. So now we can go and put a nut and bolt through that hole and then once we've tightened that back up we can then go ahead and remove this bolt put the trim back in position and then reinstall this bolt and the installation will be finished. Now the kit will come with a stainless steel bolt, a large flat washer and a nylock nut. So that is the hardware we want to use to install onto the front hole of the rod holders where we have to drill the hole through the hull. Once this hole has been drilled, anytime you're drilling a hole through the hull you always want to check inside so it pays to remove this uh, plastic wall in here so you can view in there and just check to make sure that there is nothing behind there that you're going to drill into no wiring that someone's put in or something silly like that removing that wall will also give you easier access to tightening up the bolt as well so we'll go go ahead and stick the bolt in there so that bolt is in and then on the inside we want the nut and the washer so we'll reach inside and tighten those up okay, we have now got that nut and bolt tightened down nice and snug and then we can then go ahead and remove this one reinstall our trim and since we've already got this bolt tight that hole should stay lined up when we go to put that bolt back in so it'll make the job a little bit easier but as you can see the two contour lines on here line up with those two contour lines on the hull might be a bit hard to see on camera, but you should get the idea in person. That ridge there, and there's another ridge just at the bottom of this plastic. It should line up with the rod holder nicely. You can feel that, and that should be nice and sturdy. But you will remove this bolt here and reinstall the trim.
That's it. The rod holders are installed. As you can see, the trim is back in position. We've got this bolt tightened down. The front bolt's tightened down already. Yeah, nice and sturdy. As you can see, positioning gives you one that's upright, slightly tilted back towards the rider, and the other one is angled out on about a 40 degree angle uh, from memory. It might be 38, something around there. But good for trolling in front of the riding position as well. You don't need to keep checking, looking back to check on your rods. So yeah, really good addition to the jet ski, those front rod holders. So one more addition I've made to these skis is, as you can see here, they're already fitted with a Lowrance Elite FS9. This was all done by the dealership. It's quite a nice tidy setup. And, but the only thing is, it's quite open and exposed on the back there. So you can see the wiring, especially like these plugs here are just rubber plugs that Lowrance gives you to stick over the um, plugs that aren't used. And like these plugs aren't really an issue at all. They've got a nice um, watertight o-ring in there and they've got a screw lock on them. So they are really good sealing plugs, but it's just all these other open ones that we really need to protect. So to do that, I've made a um, custom splash guard to go on the back of these units. And if we come over to this one here, you can see I've already installed this one. Just uses the original bolts on the back of these, on the back of this bracket and contours underneath the unit there to protect all the plugs and comes up over the top and has a bit of a sunshade on it give him a little bit of um, protection from the glare and he can still access the um, screws to unlock the unit and remove the unit if he needs to so yeah, as you can see there's no way water is getting back through there into the plug area so that should prolong the life of the unit nicely so we'll go and install it onto that unit and then carry on. So as you can see here, we have the splash guard. So this is powder coated alloy. So it's really strong as well. That also gives you the added protection of if you're ever driving along a freshly resealed road or something, or even in summer when the tar on the road's mounted and there's a lot of gravel flicking up off the road. This will give you protection from stones while you're on the road as well. So yeah, nice little addition to keep your fish finder safe. We'll go ahead and install that up there. As you can see, we've got the splash guard all installed on this unit. So that will keep his unit nice and safe. One thing I didn't show you is we installed these handlebar wind deflectors just to give his hands a bit of a break from the um, wind chill in winter time. So yeah, the last thing left to do is go and install a dashboard rod holder attachment onto this, onto the existing fish finder mount that we've got here, which I've got waiting on the bench over there. So there we have it, they are out to lead FS9, and vertical rod holder and angled rod holder up on the dashboard. Another vertical, another angle down there. And another vertical, another angle on each side at the back. So as you can see, sitting on the seat here, that's just a real nice convenient place to chuck your rod. Or if you're trolling, or if you're having your lunch, stick it in there for fishing. It's just all about convenience. That's what it's for. People quite often say to me, oh, how many rod holders do you need on a ski? Because if you got like two at each corner sort of thing and then another six on the fishing rack at the back, you may only have three rods and a net. So that's four rod holders you need. But, but when you're fishing and you're sitting here dealing with a fish, you want to just be able to reach over here, stick your rod in a rod holder or reach up here and grab the net and instead of having to come all the way to the back here lean over the back and grab your net, net out of there it's just all about convenience 
where you're sitting you want a rod holder not far away um, at every moment so yeah that's why I put so many rod holders on a ski <laughs> uh, this customer's also gone for a bell tether rope obviously that's just a handy rope attached to the front toe hook of the ski if you ever need it so if you're ever anchoring out in the water where you obviously can't get access to the front of the ski where you need to tow the ski or just a line for docking it's always there and it's just hooked up onto the wing mirror with a bungee and a tag on there if you ever need it so again just a handy thing to have you may not need it too often personally I use mine every time I put it on and off the trailer and yeah just a handy thing to have so we've got that we've also installed the um, bait board or filleting board on top of the chili bin here split lid bin and so this half opens so you can put your catch in without having to open the whole bin but yeah this is a removable board just bungeed on there with a latch at the front and that'll stop you from cutting up the lid of your bin when you're ever cutting bait or something like that and so that just bungees onto there and clips on at the front yeah it'll keep your bin looking better for longer um, also so inside the bin it's also opted for a couple of tackle trays and these are good for storing tackle obviously it keeps it up out of the ice and the fish and also a really good place to put your lunch as well so again just nice handy storage easy to access you can chuck your bait in here as well and it's not going to drip through down into your fish so your fish ain't going to get covered in stinky old bait if you're um, bait fishing so yeah just another nice little addition make things easier so I think that just about covers it for these skis chucked a couple of stickers on there and the customer will be picking these up tomorrow yeah if you're interested in any of these accessories they will most of them are already available and anything that's not I'll be listing on the website soon like these rod holders here so keep an eye out and if you've got a 22 VX Go check out the website if any of these products interest you. So that is it. Installation is complete on these 2022 VX Cruiser HOs. Just a little rundown on what we've got. got the rear seat rod holders, the handlebar wind deflectors, we have got dash mounted rod holders, we have got the bow tether rope. And if we come around this side, we've got the footwell rod holders on the right hand side. We've got the splash guard up there for the low rounds elite FS9 and we've got the chopping boards on top of the cooler and inside the cooler we have got the tackle trays he's also got some reel covers and um, handlebar bag as well so, yeah another installation done and dusted